All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Called Out Church. Thanks for listening online. Um, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you for your word. We thank you for every meaning of that word. And we ask that you help us understand that word even deeper today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So, this morning we're talking about the word. And this somewhat, right, we're, we're talking, we've been talking about gifts of the Spirit, one being prophecy. But the problem that I kept coming up against, right, is that if we do not understand the difference between uh, the different types of word in our Bible, which there are, because multiple times it is translated just word, Word means word to us, right? And the problem that we have in the English language is we have this understanding that they're in context of how things are spoken, right? We understand what those words mean, right? Best example I have for you in this is the English, we have one word for love, right? Now, if I say that I love a friend that's different than saying I have love for my brother or that is even different right so we got a friendship love a brotherly love we have a intimate love which is a love that I express towards my wife but then there is a fourth kind which is a godly love right so we only have in the English one word love and it can get real confusing with the English language. What exactly do you mean when you say you love somebody? Well, only in context and social understanding do we understand if I say that I love Rachel or I love Danny, it is a different type of love than what I have for my wife and even a different type of love that I would have for God. Okay? All those are different types of love, but we, we come to this understanding that we only know that because obviously right this is what he has to mean by that but when we start getting into the word right we have three meanings right and Daryl has actually asked me this before he said how can a verb be translated as a noun well we have the Aleph and the Tav right or the Alpha and the Omega or the A to Z right all those meaning the same thing, which is basically Jesus. Okay? It is speaking of the living word, which is Jesus. Now, I, want, I just wanted to bring that out in the very beginning of this because, okay, that's not exactly what we're talking about. We already know that Jesus is what? The word. The word. Okay? So we know that, but what we're going to talk about is the other two types this morning. The Logos, or the Logos, and the Rhema. Okay? Is everybody ready? Yes. So, we're going we're gonna to be jumping around every which way this morning, so bear with me. I'm sorry. It's, it's the only way that we can do this to gain understanding between the two types of words. And... First and foremost, right, let's go ahead and read 1 Corinthians 12 because we're talking about gifts of the Spirit and what specifically we're talking about prophecy. And this will relate the further on we go. Because the first word specifically, right, was prophecy or was the Word of God, right, speaking in the past to the prophets. But now... And, and keep this in your back pocket for understanding. There is rhema, which is the word of God being spoken actively currently. We'll get into them. Okay, so now, 1 Corinthians 12, starting at verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. These are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are 
differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Remember, prophecy, when we talk about it, it is not for you. It is not so that you can profit alone. Right? It is for the profit of all. Prophecy just does not lift you up. It lifts everyone up. It edifies and builds the church. It's faith. It's understanding. It is across the board for everyone. If it does not benefit all, then it is just like speaking in tongues and nobody understands. Y'all with me? But... Right? We can see prophecy being spoken over a person and it can build the rest of the church up because it is a faith building thing. Why? We can see that God is speaking something and we're going to get into more of this here in a bit. But we'll always have two or three to be in agreement that what is being spoken is the word of God. Okay? Now, prophet of all. Just remember, prophet of all. Verse 8, for to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. I think we saw last week, right, specifically towards the end of uh, 1 Corinthians 14, maybe it was two weeks ago, sorry, two weeks ago, we spoke about this, and it was specifically about tongues, right? But at the very end of it, it says, do not forbid that anybody speak in tongues. Why? Well, there is something specific we have to pull out of this, and it's an understanding underlying everything, which is what? That we should not be deciding how God wants to work with and through us. Amen. That includes everything that you see up here. A lot of people have a problem with tongues. Some people have a problem with healing. Some people just don't have faith in general. But each and every one of these, to include prophecy, we can say that somebody somewhere is probably having an issue going, I don't know if that's from God. But what we have to understand is what we read in the slide before, right? Is that God is the one that's working these gifts through the same Spirit. It is the same Lord. It is the same God. It is all the same. However, what does he begin with? He says that the... Right? He starts with that only... Let's, let's go back to it. It says, Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord by the Holy Spirit. It's very important we understand that. Why? Because towards the end times, what's going to happen? There's going to be, be false prophets with signs and wonders. It means they're going to be showing some of these same things, but do they profess Jesus as Lord? If they don't, is this really from the Spirit of God? So we have to understand and discern another gift, discernment of spirits, right? What is what? Very important when we start understanding and seeing when people are prophesying. Does anybody else agree? And if no one's in agreement, was well, this actually coming from God or is this a false spiritual understanding? Y'all with me? As well, we have to understand that if it conflicts with the Logos, right? So if what is being spoken is in disagreement with what is written, this is not from God. Do you understand? Very, very simple rules to live by and understanding when we start talk talking about these spiritual gifts. So, Logos, the written word. 
Strong's definition, 3056. And why does this matter? Why do I bring Strong's into this? Because you have to understand there are two different words that are translated in our Bible as the same. Okay? Every time we see word, we need to ask ourselves, is that written or is it spoken? Which one is it? Okay? The written was the spoken word in the past that was written down through the prophets. That is why we call it scripture, right? As it is written, you'll see it said that way. But what we have to know is that it has been written down for what? The building and the edification of God's people, okay? So, 3056, Logos, speaking to a conclusion, a word being the expression of a thought, a saying, uh, word is preeminently used of Christ expressing the thoughts of the Father through the Spirit. Okay? So here's where people get confused. This one's been written down. Was it expressed through the thoughts of Jesus and the Father through the Spirit? Yes, it was. But it's been written. You follow? There's a difference. Okay? We're going to get in Rhema in a second and I've got a lot of examples here. But we're going to go with Logos first and give you some good understanding. So John 14, verse 22. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, is everybody ready? Sorry, I'm moving fast, but it's a lot to cover today. So I apologize. Uh, if I need to slow down, tell me. Okay? Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. Logos. He will keep the things that the prophets writ had written in the past. Right? Moses and all the prophets, they have written it down. Right? It will not conflict against what has been written in the past. Okay, and my father will love him and he will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words. Okay, same word, just plural. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the father's who sent me. Okay, I'm not speaking on my behalf, I'm speaking on his behalf. Okay, this is stuff that was written in the past that came through the Father, delivered by the Spirit. Okay? John 15, verse 18. If the world hates you, you, will, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you. Now understand this is important, right? Because this is talking about the old word. And Jesus is claiming this as his own. Yet another example of Jesus claiming to be God. Side note, right? So he is saying, I wrote this. I had somebody write this down for me in the past. All right? So remember the word that I said to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. You follow? If you keep my word that has been written in the past, they will keep yours also. The things that God has spoken will not change. Okay? But all these things will do, will do to you for my name's sake because they do not know him who sent me. They're going to be against you because they don't understand you. Everything that you have to do is from the spiritual sense of things. And this world is built on the flesh and the, the worldly physical understanding of things. They can't see the things that are happening in the background, but by Jesus putting his spirit in you, you can tell the difference. Here's what's really happening. This is what it looks like on the surface. Most of the time, people use the word chaos. 
Chaos is something that they don't see or understand. But we can see and discern and understand things through the Spirit. Right? Because of what? God speaking to us in the Spirit. You see where this is going? John seventeen fifteen. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, right? So we're, we're in 15, this is 17 now. Uh, they are not of the world just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth, your word, yeah. right? Your word is truth. Your written word, God, take this word and as they get more understanding of you through reading it, sanctify them, purify them. Okay, so what we have to understand, right, we've talked about this in the past, the righteousness of Christ has already been attributed to you through the grace, through your faith, right? But the word and the reading of it and the understanding of it will purify this thing. Okay? It will help you to understand. So this is why everybody tells you to read the word for yourself. Why? Because it is a sanctification process. It's to help you along. It's to make you better and better as far as like the standard of God goes. Okay? You're already seen as righteous. We're just trying to wrap this whole thing up. We're trying to make it... God's trying to get you to be in agreement with Him and His Word. Okay? So what everybody sees here agrees with what's written here. Does that make sense? Okay. So... Verse 18, And you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. Just as Jesus was sent, He is sending you, equipped with the Word. And for their sakes I sanctify myself. He has purified Himself through what? Through His own words. How? By speaking through the prophets, the prophecies, the things to come of Jesus, he sanctifies himself through his sacrifice. You follow? He followed his own words. He didn't just speak it, he did it. Okay. So, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. What is the truth? The word. The written word is the truth. Jesus is the truth, right? These things will feel like they're overlapping. And we just have to understand that there is written, there is past, right? There is present and there is future. Why does that matter? Because when we're talking about prophecy, always people say fortune telling, right? You're going to tell me my future. No, not necessarily. Because God's Word tells you about the past. He tells you about your present. And He also tells you about your future. That's prophecy. Okay? So, let's continue on. Acts 6, verse 2. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, It is not desirable that we should leave the Word of God and serve tables. Did y'all hear that? We should, we should continue steadfastly in the Word. We can't quit. We have to continue. Like... Anybody ever, we'll, we'll do it this way. Anybody ever watched a show, movie, something of that nature, right? And they missed things? They didn't have a better understanding of it until they watched it the second time? And then they watched it a third time and they understand it even more? As such, right? The same with reading any type of book. And now here's what's even greater. Best book ever written always changes 
except always is in agreement with itself, the living Word of God, right? His written Word is applicable forever. It doesn't change. However, everything He has ever spoken is always accurate and applicable. Does that make sense? Okay. So, we shouldn't leave that. We should always continue to come back to it. Right? We shouldn't leave the Word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. These are leaders of the church. Okay? I believe this is Peter speaking. And he's trying to say, look, we need to be in this so much so that we do not lead anybody else astray. We've got to understand this. But we need somebody to handle the regular day-to-day -day stuff. But we have to definitely, for ourselves, as being leaders here, we got to understand this and not leave it. Ever. we got to continue in it. Continue in it. So he's just trying to give it a, a, a good example of like, look, there's, there's things that we're going to need to do and there's some things we're going to have to have other people do because we can't do it by ourselves. The body of Christ, okay? This is what this is alluding to. But, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom who we may appoint over this business, but we give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the Word, the written Word. Here's the things of God that we all need to have an understanding of. We're going to continually give ourselves to it because that is what God has called us to do within the body. You follow? So there are some... Of course, that need to be always in it. Now, it is good and profitable for all to be in it, but to each one he has appointed certain gifts to. You follow? Okay. So, Philippians 2, verse 14. Do all things without complaining and disputing. Oh, man. Dang it! <laughs> Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to or holding fast the word of life. How is it that something spoken in the past is going to be life for me now? Because this is truth. It's written. It doesn't change. It is always the same. Right? Holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Yes, and if I am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. For the same reason, you also be glad and rejoice with me. The Word of God tells us we're going to have to deal with this world, right? And that we are going to have to deal with problems that arise, and we are going to have to understand that it is okay for problems to arise because only God shines His light through us by us going through things. So we have to hold fast to His Word. We've got to grab a hold of what He has written in the past and stay with it, stick with it. Don't separate or stray from it. Here's our standard. Here's our understanding. Here's where God's thoughts and His mind and everything have been expressed through us. This will ultimately help us understand when God decides to speak actively to our spirit. Because we know so much of this word that when we hear His voice, you see what I'm saying? If you don't learn to hear what His voice sounds like to begin with, 
How are you going to understand Him when He actively speaks in your spirit to you directly? Oh. Whose voice is that? Anybody ever done that? God, is that you? Are you, are you sure that's you? I don't know if that's you. Can you make it absolutely clear to me? I'm real confused, God. Why would you take me out of this comfortable place and put me in a place of... Oh. You see what I'm saying? Only through understanding His written word are you going to get closer and understand. Every single one of the prophets and disciples went through a lot of stuff. Why? Point it back to Him. All of it. Every single bit of this always points back to, I got to have God. I got to have His Word. Every sense of the meaning of Word. I've got to have that in my life. Got to have the written. Got to have the spoken. Got to have the living. I got to have His Word. Okay? I'm almost through Logos. Almost. Verse 6. Uh, 1 Timothy 4, verse 6. If you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words. Logos, right? Nourished. You've got to feed yourself this, right? Your spirit man craves and needs the written word. So, nourished in the words of faith and of the good doctrine which you have carefully followed. 2 Timothy 2. Verse 14, remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit. To the ruin of the hearers, right? That's spoken, by the way. Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We have talked about in the past rightly dividing the Word of God. The written Word. How, how in the world does this go with that? Was this written to me or was this written to the Jews? Is this church age or is it things that are to come after the church age? Being able to rightly divide is important because then you have a deeper, better understanding. Is this a pattern that God is going to work in from the past? Or are we talking about the present, which is written directly to us? There's a difference, right? There's a difference. You are not Israel, but you are sons and daughters of God. You are the church age Gentile believers. Rightly dividing that and understanding that not everything in the Old Testament was written specifically to you. But it is profitable, right? Other places it is profitable for you. Because a lot of the Old Testament was written specifically for the Jews, right? First for the Jews and then for the Gentiles. So we have to understand those to be able to rightly divide. Does this directly apply? Mm, yes and no. Right? A lot of things are just the principles of God that we can draw out. But what we do know is the writings of Paul, our apostle, right, are directly written to the church age believer. Everything from Romans all the way up to, I think it's, it's either Hebrews or Philemon, one or two, directly at us. Here's how you walk it out. Here's the Gospels. Here's the past. Here's how Jesus did what he did for you. Here's the good news. Here's how to walk that out. Romans on, right? Okay. 2 Timothy 4, one more time. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Until he comes, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. 
But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. How? Make sure you're preaching this word. Make sure you're in it. Make sure you understand it. Make sure you're walking it out. Whatever it is that God has put on you for your ministry, the spiritual gift He gave you and empowered you with, it's not about talking. It's about actually doing. Amen. You follow? Okay. Hebrews 4.11 Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and to joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now this is the written word. Good example, right? You ever feel something in your heart to be true, right? You feel like this, is, this has got to be it. And you go over to the word and you're either rebuked or right what you find is absolutely 100% true and correct you find it in what the word I've got this type of issue what's the pattern that I see that God had wrote in his word how is this supposed to be there's just there's just something wrong about this how should a marriage look how should a household run? It's in His Word, right? Even that stuff is written in His Word. Now, I'm going to point this out, right? Sharper than any two-edged sword. Defy, right? Uh, piercing even the division of soul and spirit. Who you are versus who God says you are. Here is who I was born as in the flesh as a man. Here's what the Spirit of God says I am. Slice it right in two. This is who you think you are. This is who you really are. His Word will show you that. Okay? James 1.21 Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. His written word shows us what we should be. Okay? Um, last one for Logos. I don't have that many for Rhema, trust me. Let the word of Christ dwell in, you, dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. So... Let his spoken or uh, written word dwell inside you. It's kind of like a double meaning here, okay? One, you read it, but then it becomes alive in you when you read it. His word will start to speak through you, through what you have read in the past, okay? So that's where we get to Rhema. Completely different word in the Greek. A spoken word made by the living voice. It is an active living voice. It is commonly used in the New Testament for the Lord speaking His dynamic living word in a believer to in-birth faith. His inwrought persuasion, right? 
the word speaks in here. Okay? Now, Jeremiah and Ezekiel both prophesied about this and said that he would write his word in our mind and on our hearts. Right? And he, that, and he spoke about this specifically when he was talking about... They both spoke this on behalf of God telling them to speak this prophetic word, right, that was written down. At the time, it was Rhema. At the time... The prophets were hearing it. It was then Rhema, God actively speaking in them. Okay? So, where do we see this? 1 Corinthians 2, 13. These things we also speak, not in words, which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Without the Spirit of God, you will not understand God when he speaks. You won't hear him. Why? Because you have no eyes and no ears to hear in the Spirit. You only have physical eyes and ears. So you can only understand the physical world. But until you receive Jesus, receive His Holy Spirit, you're not going to hear a thing from God. Okay? All you have is the written Word. Why do you think He provided that? Okay? So now, where are we at? Where are we at? 15? But he who is spiritual judges all things that he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Christ in you. You have the word in you. The Holy Spirit is the word of God speaking to you. Other places he says, I don't speak on my own behalf, but on the Father's. Okay? So, I want you to see this because a lot of people know this verse. Or, I think it's a little bit further down, but here we go. Romans 10, verse 8. But what does it say? The spoken word is near you. This changes it, right? This changes it. Why? Because it becomes in agreement with what Jeremiah and Ezekiel said. It'll be written in your mind and on your heart. So it's near you. How? Always through the Holy Spirit who resides in you. So the spoken word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word, the spoken word of faith which we preach. God is going to speak directly to you. The Holy Spirit is a comforter. Through the Spirit, through the Spirit, right? You should be hearing you should have understanding. Verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God was ra has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The salvation is what brings the Spirit. Being able to confess Jesus, right? You believe in your heart, then confess with your mouth. It says two different actions here. Believes unto righteousness. How do you receive righteousness? Through faith in Christ and the Holy Spirit coming to reside within. At which point now you can discern spiritually when God speaks. Okay? How does this tie in with prophecy? How are you going to receive the word of God unless you can hear it? Is that, does this make sense? I hope so. So Romans 10, we all have heard this. Skipping down a few verses, verse 16. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah says, Lord, 
Who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the spoken word of God. That's interesting, right? That's, that's rhema. That is the spoken word. Your faith is increased when you hear from God directly. See, that, that verse became a complete and utter new understanding for me. It's still God speaking, but it's speaking from within you. How, how, what is the best example of this, right? Um, God told me recently, right? I think all of you know this. That I was going to have some trouble coming up. I was going to have a little bit of an issue, and he led me to believe that it was going to be financial. But he also spoke to me, and he told me, hey, it's going to be all right. Don't worry about it. It'll be just fine. You just stay and do and continue to do what you're doing. Everything's going to be fine. It's probably about a month after that was when I was confronted with, oh, your contract is changing. Oh, by the way you're going to take a significant decrease in pay. But wait. And I had to remember, God told me it was coming. Everything would be okay. Because then what? Panic? Ugh. Hold up. Well, what do I really need all that for? He says, I'm fine. You don't. And here's the crazy thing. Here's the cool thing. Even though it was a significant decrease... We haven't really noticed. I'm just saying. All I can say is that God has been orchestrating, conducting things all around me so that everything I lost was not a real loss. Why? Because what, what actually changed? It was a test of my faith in whether or not I was going to trust his word and gain faith through his word that he spoke through my heart in me. I heard him speak his word to me and tell me everything is going to be all right. And I had to put my trust in that word. He spoke to me. And guess what? Guess what? Everything's all right. And believe it or not, better things are coming. So, when he speaks, pay attention, right? It is to produce an increase in your faith. Okay? This is how God becomes real to us. It's through things like this. If you don't see trouble coming, if he doesn't ever say, listen to me, right? How are you ever going to understand the shepherd's voice? My sheep will know my voice. He's got to give things to you so it, it produces an increase in your faith. If it's never tested, well, where's the increase? Right? If you don't try to pick up a weight and build that muscle, it never increases. It's uncomfortable to exercise your faith. It is uncomfortable. But when he speaks to you, it is an exercise of your faith. For what? An increase in it. So that you learn to trust and lean on Him even more in your time of trouble. The next time trouble comes, you're going to go, Oh, no, no. I, I know what you said right here. I need to trust it again. Even more so this time. So, 2 Corinthians 13. This will be the third time I am coming to you. By the mouth of two or three witnesses, every spoken word shall be established. It's interesting. That's where we come to the point of when we have prophetic speaking over something. That all of us, all two or three witnesses... Every spoken word shall be established. Two things, okay? When we hear somebody speaking prophetically, it should be confirmed. Two or three. As well, right? If we are in agreement, if two or more of you are together, what? 
There, there he is with us, right? Okay. So, verse 2. I have told you before and foretell as if I were present the second time and now being absent right to those who have sinned before and to all the rest that if I come again I will not spare. Since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me. Do you, do you see? Who is not weak toward you but mighty in you. You want to know that God speaks through me? He's already told me the stuff you've been doing over here, you naughty, naughty Corinthians. You hear that? I already know what's happening. I'm not even with you. I was with you that second time. Rebuked, corrected. He did all those things while he was with him. He's not with them now, but God is letting him know they need to get some act right. And he's letting them know, oh, I'm going to tell you about yourself. Because God has already told me what you've been doing. And if you don't fix it, I'm going to come and air your dirty laundry in front of everybody. Because why? Because first we got to come one brother to another. If they don't listen, right? This is talking about sin in the church. If they don't listen, then okay. Two of you go together and speak with them. And if they still don't listen, air that dirty laundry amongst the entire church. Jesus taught us that. Right? This is what Paul's practicing right here. And he is telling them, God's already told me what is happening. Tighten it up. <laughs> okay? So, he can only know this through the Spirit of God speaking it to him actively. Right? Ephesians 6. Now this... This is good stuff. We saw that the written word separates, right? Bone and sinew and soul and spirit. That was the written. Ephesians 6, we know, armor of God, right? To watch. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. We are in a spiritual battle. Now you better bring the spirit to fight. So watch. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with the truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit which is the spoken word of God. Do you understand? He is going to tell you how to strike. He's going to tell you how to solve this situation. He is going to speak to you actively, letting you know this is how we walk this out. You will have the sword of the Spirit, which is Him speaking in you. There's a difference here now, right? Why, why does He tell us this way? Why is there a difference? And why has it been muddied down and tainted over time to where we couldn't understand? Oh, I thought this was the written word. No, this is God speaking actively through and with you. Why? They tried to downplay the Holy Spirit working in you through you to help you understand your daily. Because at any time in this Bible, it does not say, Joe Johnson, you will have financial troubles. Joe Johnson, you are going to break your back and it will be for your good. <laughs> Nowhere did it say that in my Bible. But God spoke those things to me in my heart and told me everything would be okay. How are we going to have a personal relationship unless we have a personal relationship, God speaking in us, to us, through us? 
It ain't there. It is a still, small voice letting you know, I am here. Here is what you need to do. It is your sword in your spiritual battle in this world. You got to, you've got to understand and go back and do your homework. Believe it or not, this is a fraction. I've only given you a fraction of the scriptures that have been translated this way and that. I don't care what, what translation you're using. If you don't go back to the Greek, you don't go back to the Hebrew and understand the actual words that are there, it's going to be a watered-down version of what God really has for you. Watered down. I've heard people say in the past, well, if God really wanted you to understand that, it would have been translated perfectly for you that way. Shut up. It's aggravating. That's a cop-out. That's you not wanting to understand what God has for you. That is you not wanting to seek. You know what I'm saying? We have to seek. Each and every one of us. Okay. Both the Logos and the Rhema. It starts with the Logos, which produces Rhema. You will understand His voice when you become His sheep. Starts with the Logos. So, uh, which is the word, the spoken word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplications for all the saints. And for me, the utterance, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Not being afraid, but being emboldened and empowered by the Spirit. The Spirit, the Spirit, the Spirit, the Spirit, the Spirit, the Spirit. Do you hear it? Over and over again, right? So, for which I am an ambassador in change that it, in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Why? Because you received a spirit of boldness and of sound mind. Matthew 4, and then we're done. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. Y'all ready? But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every spoken word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Everybody wants to turn that into the written word. It's different now, isn't it? You will proceed by what? God's spoken word in you. He will speak to your heart through His Spirit, and then you will have understanding. You will have revelation. You will be led to the places you are to go, and now you know how to operate within your spiritual gift He placed in you. If prophecy, then prophecy. Right? If in tongues, then tongues. If in this, then that. But he placed it in each and every one of us that have received him as our Savior. Now he's trying to work with you. But you're not going to understand it unless you pay attention, as Daryl said, to the still small voice. So, we'll probably dive a little bit deeper now that we understand there is a difference spoken, written. We'll dive into those and we'll refer probably next week. But with that said, Danny, if you'll close us out, sir. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus and we just thank you for your word, Father. I thank you for, that you put this on Joe's heart to share with us, Father, that we can have a walk and talk and relationship with you if we'll just spend word and, and time in your word, Father. And all, all boils down to is having a uh, 
a day-to-day -day relationship and to me. And I thank you for it. Lord, I just pray that your blessings go with all of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.